So, you know, every time I talk about Justice Ginsburg, I give a talk or I talk about the book, I always get the question, which is, why didn't she retire? And okay, I'm going to give you the and quick I want to hear what your answer. take is on that. Um, I'm going to give you the quick and dirty answer to okay. that. Um, we now know, I, I didn't know at the time that uh, President Obama invited her to the White House in, I think, 2013 or 14, and suggested basically to her that she might want to think about retiring. Um, and she did not do it. Um, you have to remember that at the time, there was still a filibuster of judicial nominees in place. And I think that the reason that she didn't retire then, that there were lots of reasons. One, she was at the top of her game. She was the senior liberal justice and she was able to make some real differences there because of that. Uh, secondly, she really did think that Hillary Clinton was gonna be elected president and she wanted to give the first woman president um, the opportunity to replace her. And I think that she thought that whoever did replace her, if she retired and Obama were able to make a nomination, that it, it would have to be someone that she thought in order to get through, if that individual could get through, would be sufficiently less liberal than she was, that she didn't want to make the effort. So she was healthy and she rolled the dice and she lost by a matter of weeks, but she did lose. And I certainly, I think in the last months of her life, when I saw her every week, because she came to us for dinner every week, once a week, um, because it was the only place she could go during the lockdown. Um, I think that she subjected herself to a lot of things in order to try to stay alive that she would not have otherwise. Every time I communicated with her, she always made it feel like she could, she was going to be around for when our book was going to be finished. <laughs> she could, you know, she was so positive. Like it didn't seem to me that she, uh, you know, I, I, and I wasn't in the inner circle. So, you know, I didn't, I knew she was sick. She told me she was sick, but I didn't know when she said she was battling cancer, like how, you know, how extreme it was, but she always was so like forward thinking and so positive. So I was, when she died, I was, I was actually, you know, like kind of shocked. I was shocked. You, you were probably, you were much more prepared for that than I was. Well, my husband was her okay. medical confidant. And yeah. so even though I didn't know the details of what he knew, because he wouldn't have, he's, he, besides everything else, he's a hippo Nazi. Um, I just, you know, I saw her every week and I saw that she was losing weight. Yeah. And I, you know, and I saw that um, by July, her, her guard, her female guard would put an arm around her as she walked up the six steps of, to our yeah. front door. And I, I, you know, and she was quieter and quieter because yeah. she was, I think, conserving energy. So yeah. I, I could, I just, yeah. nobody, I, you just can't, I didn't know what David knew. And, and so I could be like you and hope that she could yeah. conquer it all until after the election, but, um, she failed by a matter of some weeks, basically. 